Good afternoon, Terp fans. I'm Wayne Viner. We've got Mason Viner. We got the big dog himself, Rick Jacklich. We're here on this Terp Talk special to talk about at least the first three games of the Maryland football season. Starts off on Saturday night. Guys, you actually excited? Yeah, I, I am. I wasn't really up until this week got started. I really wasn't sure what was going to happen. I mean, we had the Florida incident, just some things not going well around the country. Uh, and, and on these campuses, but it's game week. You know, it's here, it's in a couple of days, and, and a rare night game to get things started. Two night games just start off, so it's what a rare opportunity for the Terps to make a big splash early on. And what's really cool is Maryland, uh, you know, they've won 10 straight openers, and I think they're the only team in the country other than Alabama to beat two ranked teams uh, in openers over the last couple of years. So, so let's I, see if we can keep it going. I was really confident on those Texas games. I mean, going to Texas is one of the great road trips we've been on. Having them come back to FedEx Field was really cool. Uh, Northwestern, we were thinking of going. Obviously, we're here in Maryland. In fact, this is the Jack Litch, uh, Law Group. We're in the very turped up uh, conference room. This is the winner's conference room. It, so. it is. Uh, any confidence going to Northwestern for a Saturday night start? I, I do, and I think it's a lot of, what one, what this team's been able to do week one, and then two, the odd preparation. You know, everyone's changing. It's a lot about your internal program commitment, and that's what Coach Loxley, if you really listen to what he says, that's what he's about, you know, personal accountability, personal, you know, you taking it to heart, doing your job. No one's going to be here to babysit you. It's it's time to become an adult and play football. And, and Coach Fitzgerald at Northwestern, he has a similar take on things. It's going to be just one of those games where you got to look at it and say, things aren't going to go right. You know, every week, one, every team faces that. But you've got to kind of just fight through, and we'll see a lot of what this team's made of. But based on, you know, past week ones and, and the adversity that this group of players has faced, I like them going into this game. The other thing that's interesting is the tremendous amount of new players. 18 new transfers in the Maryland, 37 uh, other freshmen. Uh, we're going to get Jay Sean Jackson back. We're going to get, we don't know who the quarterback's going to be. No, which one do you think? You have uh, Tago Viola, you've got Lance Lejean. Uh, Lejean's looked awful great in practice, so I'll tell you that. Really, really sure. He's, he's uh, you got Penny Boone coming in as new running back, freshman mm -hmm. running back. Shaq Smith is back. What about Jacobs? The, his brother plays, he's a tailback. His brother plays for the Raiders. What's the early story on him, Mason? Yeah, he's going to be kind of like that boom back. You know, he's not going to be the number one guy. I, I really love Jake Funk getting his chance, you know, getting his shot at this, a Maryland homegrown kid. But Jacobs right now is slated to be the kick returner, and I think he's going to be your one cut back. You know, you had Javon Leak and Anthony McFarland, two fantastic, you know, one cut and gone guys. Jacobs, they're going to need to find some speed. I think it's going to have to come from Jacobs. Well, he's a five star recruit. He's going to be wearing number five, so it'll be easy to spot out there. And that's the big. Strength, I think, last year at Maryland was the return game. You know, they had punt return touchdown, kickoff return touchdowns. Uh, they were really strong in the return game. So having that five-star speed back there reminds me of the days when Stephon Diggs was returning <laughs> kicks. Stephon Diggs, man, I tell you, he has eaten up the NFL. How about oh. Stephon and DJ Moore? Yeah. I mean, they both top, ranked the top ten in the NFL, both trip receivers. Doing great. So the, maybe the next one, the next one, Rock Jarrett comes in. Uh, he's not number one on the depth chart. I think is he behind Brian Cobbs? Yeah, right now he's sitting behind Brian Cobbs, but it's going to be, you know, all those guys in that mix right now. I don't really think anything's definite. You know, you can only get so much out of practice, but come game time, everyone's going to get in touch. I think we all know that. Well, Loxley had a lot of weapons when he was at Alabama. He got the ball spread around. Do you think these kids, these quarterbacks, can, can do that, which is get everybody a touch? find out fast, won't we? But it seems to be the quarterback so much more effective. You see that with Lamar Jackson and with the Ravens. You know, he locks in on Andrews as the tight end and he locks in on Hyper Brown. He's not as effective. That first game where he had seven different, nine different receivers, you know, much harder to defend. And it locks you bring the same philosophy he was so successful with as offensive coordinator at Alabama. Offensive line, Johnny Jordan back at center. Uh, some guys that played a lot, some guys that didn't. Marcus Minor changes to guard. What do you make of this rebuilt O line, Mason? I, I like the first five guys. You know, I really think Marcus Minor to guard is a really positive move. One for him as a football player for his chances to make it to the next level, and two for this team. You know, it gives you five solid guys. Uh, Branch, the JUCO transfer, a lot of people are really high on him going into this, but it's rare. 
And the most rare thing about this offensive line is they have the same coach for now a second straight year. You know, we haven't seen that Great. a lot. I like him. I like yeah, him when I, mean, I first met him. He's really a positive, more teaching aspects coach and teaches a lot of right. technique and a lot of spends a lot of time on really the simple things. And I think that's really important for this yeah. group that struggled so much last year. John was the OC at Penn. He was the OC at Rice. He actually understands football really well. If you have a chance to talk to some of these coaches, like Joker Phillips was the head guy at Kentucky. Of course, you got Montgomery was the head guy at ECU. You've got John Hoke, who was a, a defensive guy for the Tampa Bay Bucks, and we're going to get the defense in a moment. You got John, who was the OC uh, in several other programs. It's really smart guys. I think Loxley's one of the best moves was to keep the gang together. And you recruit the beef. I mean, that the key to success, I always think, is offensive line, defensive line. And you saw that last year in the first game. You saw Josh Jackson just. He could sit back there with time, and they score 50-plus points. Later in the year, the offense line couldn't protect them, and it was a pure disaster. So, Bloxy brought the beef in on both sides of the ball. That, to me, is where we're going to have to see the biggest improvement. Beef on that both sides of the ball. He said Maryland on the podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't seen it, check out the or heard it. Check out the Turp Talk Young Turps podcast. Jordan and Mason have much more depth than we're doing today, but he said that They've gotten wider, they've gotten taller, they've gotten stronger up front. Who are some of the names to look for on that new defensive line? Yeah, bringing in guys that, that have the Big Ten size. Finau and I forget the other guy, the, one of the Hawaiian guys that went to Independence that they also brought in, Mo Kite, another one. And you're getting, you know, spot after spot, two inches taller, 30 pounds heavier, you know, three inches taller. And then the other guy that you got to look at is the transfer they brought in from NC State, who's going to be playing the jack spot, that stand-up linebacker spot that Jesse Annie Bowden was able to kind of dominate. They didn't really have one last year. They tried Keandre Jones there. and, and well, Chime got hurt. I yeah, mean, I mean, Chime, Chime was, was also supposed hurt. to be yeah. the guy. But, but was that Bola Tapelli? Is that his name? Yeah, I'm not exactly that. I call him Joe B, not the guy that calls the games for the Capitals, okay. but the guy that's playing defensive line for the Terps. Yeah. Last year we saw, you know, as you just mentioned, the injury and then the shift. So they had to bring Shaq Smith, more of an inside linebacker, onto the defensive line. Keandre Jones, same thing. Kind of in between linebacker, ends up pretty much solid on the defensive line. you got to have the bodies to last a Big Ten season. I think they do this year. And if it's not, you know, if they're not the best players, at least they have the size to compete. And that's been an issue for this team since they joined this conference. You have to pressure the quarterback. That's the name of the game on defense. If you, you have a pass rush that makes every other player on that field so much better. He makes his secondary look ten times better if the quarterback's running for his life. And speaking of running, you bring in these big guys, uh, especially first and second down. The Big Ten still, it's beef on beef. I like what Maryland's doing. If you look at the recruits for next year, they do it again. It's all four and five star kids. A lot of them are big power kids. Uh, we'll get to the linebackers here in a second. I think if you look at Maryland overall, there you have these two quarterbacks, a sophomore and redshirt freshman. You just mentioned your five-star tailback. Your number one possible wide receiver is a freshman. You need a tight end or two. Offensive line. I think Jay Sean's going to be their number one. Okay. You know he's back from that knee injury. That's going to make big on difference. On offense, they got a lot of highly rated freshmen on offense. I think what you're going to see in the next recruiting class is they're going to do that and rebuild this defense here. They got a good start on it, but. You look a year or two down the road, and all of a sudden, Maryland has five, four stars, and a couple, three stars on both sides of the ball. Well, we all know the key to that recruiting is production on the field. They got to put the W's up. It makes Loxley's job on the recruiting trail a lot easier. All right, we'll be back to talk linebackers, defensive backs, and specials here on this preseason Maryland football special on your Turp Talk Network, brought to you by the big dog, Rick Jacklich, and, and here's an ad we used, uh, we just made, just for you guys to take a look at today. The Jacklich Law Group's successes have resulted in many distinguished awards, including Best Personal Injury Trial Law Firm USA, Maryland's Personal Injury Attorney of the Year, twice, and Super Lawyers designation every single year. We succeed because we're willing to try cases, and insurance companies know it. That's why their claim reps often grumble they pay us more in settlements than any other lawyers. You deserve a great lawyer. If you've been hurt in a car, truck, or train crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1. Well, we're going to move on to the linebackers now. This is Wayne Viner, Mason Viner, the big dog, Rick Jacklin. We'd also like to thank Meyer Consulting Engineers of Rockville and, of course, Viner Forgates, our home team. 
uh, for sponsoring this and in our starting our 11th year. Uh, yeah. Carver yeah. Maryland football together. Uh, you know, Rick had that job before I did. He was on the DC, he was the host of the DC Turp Talk show, and then he stepped away. So thanks for giving me that that room to get into this. He figured we'd fall and run with it. Yeah, trend. it's been a while. And of course, Bruce's not on the camera, but he's watching, clearly always watching from home. Uh, been doing this a long time, but linebackers, the guy who's been doing it a long time is Shaq Smith, came in as a big time transfer. What's his status? For this upcoming season. Right? Yeah, it seems to be, and, and this is a thing I've talked about a lot on the podcast, uh, top to bottom competition. You know, competition will drive success. Chance Campbell, Shaq Smith, and Ruben Hippolyte, a guy that's come on for the Terps in his true freshman year. Really, a lot of talent here, and, and it's going to give the Terps something they haven't had, rotational linebackers. You know, you see it a lot in the NFL, you see it a lot in big-time college football. We've had, what is it, one or two guys who can play. You know, I mean, Jermaine Carter, a guy that probably shouldn't have been out there on third down, ended up getting stuck on the field a lot. They have the speed, and especially uh, at the will linebacker spot where Ace Ely right. continues another year. I really love Chance Campbell. And maybe that's I'm a Cavardall boy. He's yeah. a Cavardall boy. Yeah. You know, I used to love watching him just destroy Loyola High School. It was a lot of fun. And now watching him with the turf. He's got a nose for the ball. He's always making plays. You know, his freshman year, he's making plays on uh, on the return teams. And, uh, you know, just always has a nose for the ball. He's got great speed and just great awareness of the field. So Nick Cross picked Maryland over Penn State. So his wisdom to me. Yeah, so he's starting his second year as a Terp. He rocks the number three jersey. What's your impressions of what I think is going to be an all-Big Ten? He's a time? ball hawk. He's got great speed. He's, he's just all around. He's a football player. And uh, he's going to have a, just a great career in Maryland. Uh, Jordan Mosley played some safety. Uh, Richardson played some safety. Both of them are back there. Who else is in that safety mix along with Cross? Yeah, I really think it's Antoine Richardson, Jordan Mosley, and Nick Cross. Those are going to be the guys you're going to end up seeing play safety. Maybe if they get forced to, they'll have to try and switch a corner back there. Uh, Isaiah Hazel and Taj Capehart, two guys that kind of gave him some time there. But those are your top four guys. Mosley is kind of an interesting story. You know, a lot of people wanted to see shift up to the Will linebacker spot. He's still back there as safety. And a good thing that Jordan pointed out on the podcast was he's a guy that's given them time back there. And he's been in and out of success. And... If somebody goes down, he's going to be that guy that's got to step up. And he's a thumper. Yeah. you got to like that from your safety. Right. Cornerbacks, as, May, as Jordan Mason just said, uh, featured you know, as backup roles two former wide receivers, which is Isaiah Hagel and uh, Dodge Capehart. Uh, guys, who else is in the corner mix? Anybody? I don't know who they're going to start. It would be interesting to see. They've got a lot of you know, young players back in that secondary, so it's whoever practices the hardest, I think. You're going to see take the field from Michael Oxley. Yeah. Any particular? Names? Yeah, I what think happened is Levante Gator played a lot. Bennett. Yeah. So Jacorian Bennett, who's a guy that transferred in, I think he's definitely going to get time. Other than that, Rick, you're right. It's going to have to be who plays best in practice. Last year, you know, it was bad, but you got to take the good parts out of it. A lot of freshmen saw a lot of time. Levante Gator, Dante Banks, Kenny Bennett had, you know, his in and out moments. Then he got injured. Somebody's got to step up and be the guy. I think it's going to be Jacorian Bennett. He's a guy that I really like the film on coming out of Juco. But Dante Banks seems to be a guy that Coach Locks is talking about a lot. All right, on the specials, uh, you still have Petrino. Petrino's the kicker, no doubt about it. Yeah, Hunter. Uh, yeah, it's going to be still Pecorella and Spangler kind of switching off, you know. They were both fairly good, Over averaged over 40 yards a punt. Got to got to shore up the blocking on special teams. Last year they couldn't even kick field goals, and this is something that you pointed out to me, because they couldn't block for them. You know, everyone's like, why didn't we try four kicks the whole year? Well, they didn't get the ball down there a lot, but I believe they had three field goals blocked and like two made the entire season. That can't happen again. Got to shore up that. I remember Katrina teams. pulled his groin in that one game, so they really couldn't. Was it the Temple game? It was the Temple game. Boy, that's that why was... they're running those plays down the goal line yeah. instead of kicking the field goals. Absolutely. That's true. So overall, think out of these games they can get I'm, I'm on a low number I think if you can win two or three games you've got Northwestern you've got your your Minnesota. home game Minnesota and then you're at Penn State uh, all three of them have been mentioned in the rankings but Minnesota Penn State certainly ranked what, what a turnaround from Minnesota last year you know they've so, taken the step that we had hoped to see Maryland take a yeah. couple years ago after watching Maryland beat those Texas teams. Yeah, but they did what you'd want Maryland to do. I went on the field, I think you were in Minnesota last year, and you go on the field and they got six, seven, 380 pound tackles. 
and he said, Shaq Smith or Keandre Jones rush. And if you're the wrong angle, you can't see the Maryland player. The Minnesota guys are so big. That's why I have some faith as Loxley brings in those bigger guys you can compete against that. Pass rush is the key to this team, I think, yeah. right. and the offensive line. Right, and what I've said is out of the starting 22, I think they're fairly good. You know, they got 22, I think, starting caliber football players. It's what happens when the injury comes, especially on both sides of the line. Who's going to step up? Who's going to play? I think they have better rotations on the defensive side of the football this year, but they were really far behind last year. We'll see what happens. You can't have the errors. And another, my favorite play that I like to point out when I talk about errors is that game at Minnesota. They're down 7 or 14 nothing. They throw a slant pass, should go for 30 yards, goes right through Demas's hands, it's an interception for a touchdown. Those are the kind of mental errors you just can't have this year. All right, I, I agree with that. Usually year two is a big turnaround year statistically. I look at this whole thing without the fans, without the band, and really without us being there, uh, almost like a giant preseason. I'm almost going to give them a bye before we get out of the gate on season two, but they got to make it to season three. What's your quick take on season two here? Brutal schedule. You know, they got the toughest division in all of football. So we'll see. The big difference is going to be the beef that Loxley's brought in. We'll see if that pays off. Final yeah. words? Yeah, I think the same thing. You know, it's going to be a lot of who can shore up some positions that are in question, especially on the defensive side of the ball, because unlike last year, and even like last year, I think a lot of these guys are going to get the pull quick. If you're not if you're not performing, especially if you're out of a JUCO spot, you know, you're coming in already a sophomore or a junior. You've got to progress and you got to get up to speed quickly. All right, thanks for watching. We'll be with you uh, in the press box, on the field, and in these uh, great sessions. I really like the last one with Rick. That was a Zoom session. Nice to do this in person again. And we will see you on the radio, 1300 CBS Sports Radio for both Turp Talk and the Sports Maven. And now every week or maybe two times a week during football season, you'll be able to listen to the young Terps on terptalk.com. Thanks for watching. Good Terps.